part of our bread and butter. Elon Omar catching heat on Twitter for suggesting that politicians were being forced to pledge allegiance to Israel. New York Congresswoman Nita Lowy responded with this. Lawmakers must be able to decide without prejudice or bigotry. I'm saddened that Representative Omar continues to mischaracterize support for Israel. I urge her to retract this statement and engage in further dialogue with the Jewish community on why these comments are so hurtful. Joining us now, Trump campaign advisor Jeff Balaban. Is there room in the Democrat Party for Ilan Omar and Jewish voters? I don't think there's room in any reasonable setting for Elon Omar and normal people. I mean, Elon Omar, the problem isn't, as Nita Lowy says, that she's expressing herself poorly in, 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 a, in a matter of debate. The problem is that her beliefs are deeply rooted in hatred and anti-Semitism. She is a hater. I'm going to say it. She is filth. She has no place in the Congress. She has no place on the Foreign Affairs Committee. It's outrageous that Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, the most powerful Democrat in America, appears on Rolling Stone hand in hand with her smiling this week. It's outrageous. Jeff, that is a very strong word that you used. Yes. Yes. You know? She is a filthy, disgusting hater. So what? She's in Congress. That's the problem. The problem is they have now taken anti-Semitism in its worst, most, most base, disgusting force, and they've mainstreamed it. And this started when they let Keith Ellison, who was known to be the Nation of Islam spokesman. Nation of Islam is not a normal Islamic group. It is an Islamist hateful group. It is a group run by Louis Farrakhan, who is a profound hater of Jews, not just of Jews, by the way, of many other people as well. And they mainstreamed it by allowing him to be the deputy chairman of their party. It's got to stop. Okay, but you used extremely strong language, yes. insulting language there, insulting yes. to Ms. Omar. You've used it. Yes. I don't hear other uh, Jewish members of Congress saying the same thing. They're not making the same demands and they're not using the same language. Absolutely correct. They're, they're still playing politics. Politics, and that's why people are beginning to say there's no room for Jews in the Democratic Party. I think the older generation, it's beginning to happen a little bit, but more and more younger and younger Jews realize this is ridiculous. They've had this hegemony, there's like this ghetto of Jewish voters in the Democratic Party, and it's, it's built on them trying to exploit the Jews and make the Jews be afraid of the people who are actually their friends. So when you have Chuck Schumer saying that the Republicans are making Israel a partisan issue, what does that mean? It means you have President Trump, who has moved the embassy to Jerusalem, who stands for Israel at the UN against the anti-Semitism of the UN, who, you know, who uh, has Jewish grandchildren, and their response is they're the ones who are saying, we're gonna stand now with the ones who hate us. We're the gonna respond ones, we're gonna bring them into Congress, put them on the Foreign Affairs Committee when they say that Israel's hypnotized the world, that Jews control the world through money, that the Jews have some kind of, uh, we're forcing them to pledge allegiance. This is the oldest form of hatred. It is the most violent and vile form of hatred, and it is no room in public discourse. Do you want your strong words, and you are an advisor to the Trump 2020 campaign, are you comfortable with using the very, very strong language as an advisor to the Trump campaign? Uh, listen, I'm, I'm using this as a Jew. I'm using it as someone whose family directly feels threatened, but literally threatened, physically threatened in the culture that's being created now by the mainstreaming by the Democrats of these kinds of people. There is, listen, if someone's going to tell me that they're going to talk to Elon Omar and she'll retract it all and apologize, not for her words. She keeps on trying to use these mealy-mouthed apologies for words and then she doubles down with another anti-Semitic tweet or statement. The problem is she has a belief system, a belief set that Jews are evil and control the world. That is no place in America in public discourse. It's got to go. All right, Jeff, we hear you loudly and clearly. Thank you very much for being on the show. We appreciate it. Sir. Sure. Thank you.